and it is more ductile why were we not using copper even earlier why were we using aluminium earlier why we wanted thick wires to be preserved so you could always make thick wires with copper also they would be still lesser resistance did not have the technology are copper wires hum kab se bana rahe all your house fittings are also copper wire so maybe the it the copper interacts with the kind of may may lead to some kind of effects that we wouldn't we wouldn't be wanting or it could it is doing something to the process to the whatever we are trying to manufacture and not getting the end product right maybe that could be the thing some kind of undesired effects may be coming to play maybe okay devji sir using copper uh, introduces more contact resistances in the active regions more resistance oh copper to less resistive than aluminum sir uh, sir you uh, show some uh, effects with the uh, oxide layer as well it gets diffused so in cause the cause or conditions oxide. and that's why we use tungsten okay so what happens is copper copper gold and silver hmm when they interact with silicon they create energy states inside the band gap deep inside the band gap see why is silicon a, a very good semiconductor because it has a band gap of 1.12 electron volts all of you remember this 1.12 electron volts hmm so this band gap what does it ensure that the electrons over here here have to dump have to be given of energy of at least 1.2 1.12 volts so that they will start to conduct so this is the switching for behavior of a mosfet or any device also that you apply some voltage so that electrons uh, you kind of surround this band gap and uh, stuff and electrons go from here to here you need that kind of voltage and that is where it is a semiconductor now what copper gold and and uh, silver do is they make intermediate energy states in the middle of these band gap so now an electron can easily jump from here to here and then with the same energy kind of stuff move from here to here so now instead of 1.12 you require a voltage of only let us say uh, 0.57 to conduct so your semiconductor no longer is as good as it was earlier okay so that is why copper usage was avoided in the semiconductor manufacturing process for a very very long time until we were hit with the wall ki ab copper ke bina kaam chalega hi nahi okay so everywhere there is copper today but the contact still remain to be tungsten why because you do not want copper to come in contact with silicon at all so in fact in fabs the copper part of the fab is physically hindered 200 meter 300 meters far away from the front end part of the fab where contacts are made so you make you do processing on wafers until contact level over here and then you physically shift the wafers to the other side there are there is a different clean room all together which you will need to go to and then you will do the processing of metal one and upwards okay so contacts continue to be tungsten uh, we as have moved from uh, tungsten to copper because with copper you could do a different thing with copper what you could do was you could make two tiers of etching so up you see aapne yahan pe first tier of etching kara and then what you did you deposited the resist on it again and you made another exposure and with that after that exposure you made the second level of etching done so now when you deposit copper over here you will make a via and also the metal in one step so this saves cost this is called as dual damascene process which was enabled by copper and the major you know it really changed the way we handle 
handle devices because as soon as dual damascene process was enabled defectivity reduced significantly and you could go to many more number of metal layers so until there was aluminum you could only think of four or five metal layers but today you can very easily think of even 11 12 metal layers every extra metal layer is extra cost but at least if you want you can get them because of the dual damascene process okay so yes so how uh, so before the 130 nanometer we were using aluminum for wires but for via via we are using different kind of things tungsten okay for via we are tungsten then aluminum but now we are using for via and wire copper yes so but then how it is reducing the defectibility i mean you just mentioned okay it. so you tell me one thing i make one step and i let us say uh, i have to make a how do we put it i have to you be okay we just saw an example now we made contacts and then we deposited metal over it what happened there was more defectivity because there were two different steps is it not yeah yes sir yes sir so if i were to if i were to make the contacts and uh metals in one step it will automatically always fill the contact fully na okay okay so basically we are we, we are getting... reducing the cost the defectivity due to misalignment okay okay we are doing the deposition only once so, yes okay it is flowing okay okay fine sir so overall cost of your trip would reduce yeah okay sir okay so dual damascene process enable that uh what we really need to realize is that with copper because we just understood that copper can diffuse into silicon and can lead to uh interstitial uh, those intermediate states and completely spoil the functioning of your of your uh, device so for copper you need to be extremely careful and you need to put a barrier around copper copper wires so that this copper doesn't diffuse out of the wire region otherwise copper will very easily diffuse into the oxide and from oxide it will very easily go into the substrate also hmm so you need to make this barrier now when you were at 65 nanometer what happened you made a barrier which was uh, uh, say 5 nanometer thick and you were still fine but as you go to a finer geometry what happens now the barrier width has not changed but your wire width has reduced so the effective resistance increases significantly so we are continuously looking for as we go to advanced technologies we are continuously looking for advanced barrier materials also theek hai jaise this was a uh, pvd ka full form kya tha plasma kuch deposition and this is atomic layer deposition you you actually deposit this atom by atom so we are going to advanced technology so that this barrier thickness we can reduce somehow so using copper has improved yield has improved stuff but it has also led to more complexity in manufacturing processes we will look into this aspect a little in, in in more detail later also okay so what do we do see we are almost done with the class time but there are three or four more slides should i continue or do we want me to stop and uh, then continue in the next class so is it okay if we stop right now hmm it's already too much uh, not that actually it's friday uh, and uh, if i miss the namaz uh, oh. home, then i have to go 10 to 11 kilometers that's why okay okay so would you be okay by watching the recording or if others are okay can we just continue for five more minutes and then you can watch the last five minutes of recording later is that okay okay yeah that will be okay because recording so we will be sharing anyways hai na nah, okay okay sir if there is some question you can ask me in the office sir okay okay thank you thank you sir others are you okay with another five minutes of the class yes sir Yes, because then that will we will complete the fabrication part and we will move to the devices in the next class. It will make it you know a consistent thing then. Okay, 
and uh, if you're tired and you want to leave you can you can watch the recording the five last five minutes later also okay so uh, we said that fabrication is a piece of art you know you see that we wanted to fabricate a wire like this but we ended up fabricating something else we also did an experiment that if i want to oh, did we do that experiment okay let us do it now uh, you have a pen and a paper with you you write your name exactly the same way 10 times you write your name 10 times trying to make it make each each version a, a replica of the earlier ones please please do that write your name 10 times once you are done put a plus one in the chat window so you know why i am asking you to write your name because your name is the most you know uh, wonderful sound to your ears you hear it the most so this is the most beautiful sound for you i want you to write your name 10 times trying to match the earlier versions and then tell me if all the 10 words exactly the same or not were they the same are all the 10 no, versions sir. of those no same? sir no, no sir what happened no. there were some variations that came that to world i just asked you to write your name 10 times how many transistors do you want to make on every die million billions billions of transistors आप अपना नाम दस बार तो सही से लिख नहीं पा रहे एंड यू टॉकिंग ऑफ अ मशीन टू मैन्युफैक्चर मिलियंस ऑफ ट्रांजिस्टर्स एग्जैक्टली द सेम वे कैन इट एवर हैपन नो सर नो दे विल बी व्हाट इज कॉल्ड एज वेरिएशंस सो एज वी गो टू एडवांस टेक्नोलॉजीज दिस वेरिएबिलिटी स्टार्ट्स टू बॉदर अस कम टू थिंक ऑफ इट लाइक दैट इन 65 नैनोमीटर टेक्नोलॉजी द गेट ऑक्साइड थिकनेस इज ओनली 12 एंगस्ट्रॉम्स which is only 2 to 3 molecules of silicon dioxide add one more molecule and what has happened the gate oxide thickness has changed by 25 to 30% hmm let us look at the gate length let us say i etched the length the length a little more so the instead of uh, uh, 65 60 nanometers i ended up manufacturing 65 uh, 55 what happens performance improves a bit 8% performance change leakage goes by more than 30% 60 60 ki jagah i ended up making 55 now let us say this 5 nanometer error i make in a 22 nanometer technology with 18 nanometer gate length what happens now so over here what was the error okay the error was less than 10% what will be the error over here if i make a 5 nanometer error it will be almost 30% are you able to see this so small errors which were handleable or manageable with some margins in earlier technologies are today com completely unacceptable so when we go to advanced technologies not only do we need to work on wavelength of light and this and that we also need to work a lot on instrumentation so that your instruments are very very accurate so scaling is not just about you and me and electronics engineers any longer it is it is all about a lot of technology people making it work for us hmm are you able to see this any questions okay so in this slide what is this uh, high k dielectric thing which you mentioned yeah, we will come to that later high k dielectric so uh, what happens is in advanced technologies uh, so already see the gate oxide was 12 angstroms 2 to 3 molecules of silicon dioxide when you scale you need to go to an effective oxide thickness of 8 angstroms yes sir so that is just 1 to 2 atom 1 to 2 molecules okay yeah you see the variability would increase so much so what was done was instead of silicon dioxide as the gate dielectric we used high k materials as gate dielectric so that physical thickness of the oxide would be something of the order of 20 angstroms 
but in terms of silicon dioxide the effective thickness would be in the ratio of the high k so effectively gate oxide thickness is 8 8 angstroms but physical gate oxide thickness because of a high k dielectric is 20 angstroms so variability reduces yes, so now Sorry. we are playing with the chemical properties of that yes okay materials okay so we mentioned about clean rooms so there are huge range of you know uh, different standards of clean rooms and uh, uh, you see there was a class 100000 clean room earlier we felt it is good enough we came to class 1 and we realized the clean room capability is no longer good enough so we had to define a, a completely different standard an iso standard where further advanced clean rooms have a name which the earlier terminology did not even have okay and these clean rooms are are really like sacred places if you want to enter into a clean room you have to wear extra layers of of clothing over your regular clothing that's a uh, you know uh, you see all these uh, uh, kits that doctors have been wearing in this covid times so Uh, the, the, the technology engineers wear two such kits every time they enter into a clean room. A very high pressure is maintained inside the clean room, so that even if you open the door, because of high pressure, the air would come out of the clean room and not enter. So no dust can enter into the clean room from outside. So high pressure is maintained. Uh, yellow light is used, so that even by accident you do not expose any photoresist or anything. and as i already mentioned a separate in clean room for implant at wafer level and deposition of copper so clean rooms uh, are something that are again you know a completely logistics management of a vlsi facility is a completely different beast so my attempt over here is just to share with you ki kitna kuch jata hai so many people ensure that you and i are able to design what we are designing well okay uh this is so whatever we design we have to test and uh, only good stuff only good wafers and good dyes need to be shipped to customers so there are a range of tests that every dye needs to go through and uh, you know a test equipment just one machine could be 1 million dollars today machines are actually much costlier even 5 million dollars and 10 million dollars machines are there because you have to test so many devices you have to operate them at a higher frequency so machines have also become costlier and realize that the over of the overall cost of test a huge 57% of the cost even at this time was depreciation cost so there is a huge research effort that we as designers are also taking up to reduce the test the cost of test So in, even in my group, we are working quite extensively on reducing the cost of test for okay for SAMs in my group. But yeah, across the board, people are working on on um, methods to reduce the cost of test. 